So there's your heart. Obviously, it's been cut open. And this, I don't know if you remember from AMP1, that's called a coronal section. When you cut it this way, coronal or frontal. So they took the front off the heart. So that makes this, oh, it wants me to be green. That makes this the, this. and it's going to stay like that. Later, we are going to see a picture of the back of the heart, okay? But we're going to spend a good amount of time on this picture. So first thing we want to know about the heart is we want to know the chambers of the heart. Those two chambers. And by the way, you guys, I'm going to mark this up and erase and mark this up and erase. So um, the finished product is going to look a lot different than right now. So I don't know how to tell you what to write right now because <laughs> this this is the basic stuff I probably would not write that on the picture okay and the bottom two are kind of oddly shaped and those are the ventricles and so we have two atria and two ventricles and those are Chambers. And I am going to try to be efficient with our time tonight. Um, and that's a lot easier when there's just a few of us. Okay, the next thing. I'm going to do a little racing because you can see those chambers. I'm going to color those in a bit, though. At the exit of every single one of those chambers, we have a valve. And our valves are made of connective tissue with epithelium over them, so they look very different than the chambers. I'm using blue for no reason right now, just because it's a good uh, color to highlight. So here is a valve. That's at the exit of which atria? Right. Very good, the right atria. See this valve over here? Looks just like it almost. So it's at the exit of the left atria. So right there, and I'll, I'll make this all pretty in a minute. You can tell if I'm calling that the exit, then that means blood must be going that direction. Okay? So in the top two chambers, the blood goes down. Now, funny thing, the other valves look completely different. They don't have big, long cords. They don't attach down to some big muscles, and they're not really long. They're really short like this. They're just little flaps like my hands, and when the blood comes up against them, it just pushes them open, and when the blood falls back, it hits them and spreads them out, and they close. So pushes up, it opens them. Pushes down, it closes them. It just works like that. So here are our other two. Right there. So you can kind of see the way they've drawn it's a little odd, but the valves are basically in a plane right across there. Notice they're all kind of more towards the top of the heart. There's no valves down at the bottom. They're all in a row kind of toward the top, not all the way at the top, but right here. Okay. We could kind of say in a line between the atria in the ventricles. That's where they are. Okay. So who can tell me this? What chamber is that valve at the exit for? Very good. The right ventricle. See how I, I drew the line to guide you? Blood in the right ventricle is going to go up and out there. Blood in the left ventricle is going to go up and out, right there. So two chambers exit the atria on the sides, and the two in the center are where the ventricles exit, OK? If you, this is not a beautiful picture by any means, 
but if you would like to take a picture of it, that's a good first level. Oh, let me, give me one sec. I need to make that look. Exit, <laughs> exit a vowel. Hmm. Hmm. All. Oops. Give me color back. All vowels are at exit of the chain. Now, still not pretty, but at least it makes more sense. Every time you exit a chamber, you go through a vowel. Now, what the weird thing that means is that means when you go into the ventricles, there's a valve there. But that's not the rule. That's just how it happens to be. When you exit a chamber, there's a valve. And here's why. It's so simple. We don't want the blood to go backwards. We don't want it to go back into a chamber. So when it exits, there's a valve. If blood tries to go backwards, it closes and it blocks it. And it's that simple. Now, valves can break. They don't always work. But if they're working fine, they prevent blood from going backwards. Okay. So the next thing I want to do, even before I'm doing it in a little different order than normal, since we've seen the valves, I'm going to go ahead and name them for you and get you used to some of this terminology and some of this language. Now, fun for you, because it's AMP, they don't all just have one name. Right? Yeah, sorry about that. So I'm pointing at the valves on the sides. Remind me, where are those valves located? At the exit of the chamber. What's this chamber? Oh, it's atrium. There you go. There you go. So the first valves I'm showing you are at the exit of the atria, and that happens to be the entrance of the ventricles. So look, their first name, this valve is the Right, atrioventricular valve. So you want to take a wild guess what that one is? The left. And look, this time I'm going to abbreviate it. Oh, don't even start that. Rogue pin. Okay. So the one on the right is called the right atrioventricular valve. That's its big, long name. I will commonly abbreviate that. The right, oh my goodness, it's going to make me work hard tonight. The right AV valve, okay? And then that one's the left AV valve. Sadly, in medicine, they don't use those names. They are so easy because they are descriptive. They tell us positionally exactly where they are. But this one on the right... Well, I'm going to do this when I get to a lung, but I'll show you now. When I draw R, did you see I made three swipes? One, two, three. It just so happens that that valve got three flaps. And those flaps, they call a cusp. So look at its most common name. They call it the tricuspid valve. This one over here, aha, uh -huh. when I made an L, how many swipes did I do? Two. And it's so terrible. Here's, here's one. I'm going to go get a little bitty baby pen real quick. And I'll get a little um, highlighter. because neither of those are the most common name. I'm not telling you don't know them. 
but I just wanted you to know the number one name for this style. Does anybody know it by chance? Mitral valve. And the number one name for this one is this. So I'll just highlight it in blue so when you see it, it'll stand out. The tricuspid or tricuspid valve. Okay. Those are the valve names that are used most in the medicine, most in the hospital, most in probably in nursing as well. The others are legitimate names. This means on the test, if I ask you this name and, and you just blank on that, you can put, well, you could put that and you would get three of the four points because you abbreviated, but I would know you knew it. If you put that, you would get the whole credit or if you put that. Okay. So there you have it. Ready? You know how I like numbers. The valve with three flaps has two names. The valve with two flaps has three names. So go ahead and snag your picture. Those are just the AV valves. So those are the valves on the sides. Now we need to name the valves in the middle. I mean, they're not exactly in the middle, but they're kind of in the middle. So the ones you're going to want to use are the ones in yeah, those are the best. You can use any, um, but those are the most common. I do know on the lecture test, I'm so glad you asked that question. There's a question that makes sure you know all the names. Like, I don't know who will get this question, but each of the following is a name for the valve between the atrium and ventricle on the left, except for, and it'll list like, you know, different ones. And then you have to remember, Oh my goodness, the one on the left there has three names. So it in the lecture, there are questions to make sure you know it more in depth than in the lab. Okay. So now let's do the other ones. The other ones um, are easy. There's only one name for each one of them. But they're named for the blood vessel that they lead into. They're not named for heart chambers this time. They're named different. And so... Because we didn't have class that night, and because, um, well, commonly we don't do these blood vessels, not, not on the heart with the blood vessels. We see them as in the body. You may not know the name for all of these. I mean, everybody knows one of the names. This right here. And even if you couldn't have labeled it right away, once I say it, you've heard of the aorta. Okay, so that blood vessel is the aorta. This blue blood vessel right on the front, very good, pulmonary trunk. That's the pulmonary trunk. Now, I will take time to help you name those in a little bit. We'll go through blood flow through the heart, and you'll see right where those come out of. But here's what that means. This valve that opens up into the pulmonary trunk, they call it a pulmonary valve. And that's its short name. I'm okay with you using that. It happens to be both of these are called semilunar valves. Okay? So you can say pulmonary semilunar valve or just pulmonary valve. It's really the same name. It's just two forms of the same name, but that's the pulmonary valve. That's not pumpkin spice latte, people. Okay. This one, this little hidden one, it does lead into the aorta. So And I'm doing, I'm writing this one different just so you see it written the other way. Aortic semilunar valve or simply aortic valve. Okay. Also, crazily, see the ending? Sometimes they'll call that pulmonic instead of pulmonary. Does, doesn't matter, just a different form of the word. But every form of these sticks with the base. They're named for the blood vessel. So aortic valve and pulmonary valve. This becomes important in our next lab. 
because these two valves have a different shape than these. So these two valves are your semilunar valves, and these two valves were your AV, your AV, atrioventricular valves. And they work a little different, and they work at different times because they're in different places. And we won't really talk about that much, much tonight. We'll talk about that more next time because it's related to some important stuff with the heart. Okay. So there, um, these are your semilunar valves, the pulmonary and the aortic. And once again, if you're asked the name, you do not have to write semilunar. I'm okay if you do, but you don't have to. So now we're going to talk about how the heart works. We're going to talk about the chambers and what they do, and we're going to associate it with a color. Normally, this is where I would say, oh, from our last lab, tell me what the name of this blood vessel is, but because of how it went, I'm just going to name them. So to begin with, notice these blood vessels here and here are blue. Okay. Now, the reality is they're not really blue. They're a different color of red. And blood vessels that they draw in red are red because they have a lot of oxygen. So these blood vessels that they will draw in blue, they have less oxygen. Does anybody remember the name? Yeah, they say that these blood vessels are carrying deoxygenated blood. And blood that has low oxygen, this is kind of neat. The concept is very important and really simple. What do these blood vessels need to pick up? And where are they going to go to pick up oxygen? They're going to send the blood to the lungs, and in the lungs it's going to get oxygen. So watch this. These two blood vessels they go right here. Who wants to remind me what chamber that is? Very good, that's the right atrium. So they open up into that right atrium. Oh, by the way, over Christmas they were supposed to repaint our wall for us fix all those holes. Didn't happen. So what I'll do now, because we don't need that, because I'll do it this way. Now that I have some color in there, I can show you the direction of the blood flow with little arrows like that. And so this blood vessel here, is called the superior vena cava because it's on top. Want to take a wild guess what the low is called? Inferior vena cava. And they're both sending blood back to name this chamber. The right atrium. Oh, there we go, right atrium. There we go, the right atrium. Okay. And blood from that right atrium is going to pass through this valve very easily. See, here's the beauty of valves. They're shaped like this. And fluid comes in, just spreads them open. There's no resistance. Anything that comes in just goes right through. It's that simple. So this blood, honestly, before the heart even contracts, just when the blood comes back, it's going to start pouring down in there. And it's going to fill up this chamber. I should have changed my pen and made it thicker. I'll try to remember that next time. So there we have it. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this for blood flow. Right atrium is going to push blood down. And we don't want to forget there was a valve there. Now, it would go through that valve, and the valve would open, but I wanted you to see the valve. So I drew it like that. 
Now I'll clean it up so our picture looks a little better. And this time I'll do the valve like, like that. So you can see that the blood went through the valve. Okay. So now blood's down here. It's filled up this chamber, pretty much filled up that chamber. It, honestly, it doesn't totally fill it. Okay. Now it's going to contract. Where's it going to push blood? Which way? Sorry. Which way? Just be generic. Out of the mouth. Okay, there you go. Ah, you did learn something. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to push it up. And yes, as it goes up, here's the crazy thing. I mean, it just goes up like this. And when it goes up, it's going to hit this valve before it goes out. So as it goes up and it hits that valve, remember the valve's pointed this way. Now it hits it, closes it, and then on level it goes that way. And it goes up and it shoots out right there through our next little valve. Anybody want to remind me what that valve is because it goes in here? Pulmonary valve, because that's the pulmonary trunk. Okay. And yeah, we don't. Let's do it in white. Stick with our PT right there. And so that, that pulmonary trunk. It splits right here. I know this one's hard to see. This one's easy. It goes that way. And this one goes out here, and it comes right here. And I'm going to change the angle. I'm going to make it go like that. Now, it doesn't because really your lungs are right here. They're that close. But I'm going to put your lungs way over there so we have room to write because we want to be able to see things. So we're just learning. So this vessel comes shooting out over here. This vessel comes shooting out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ugliest little cute lung you've ever seen. There's a little lung. I never can get them the same size. There's a little lung. Are they close? No, nah, not even. So what happens in the lungs? Good. It exchanges gases. So look, the blood comes in. Remind me what word we call this blue blood? Deoxygenated. De and in the lungs, it mixes with oxygen and it changes colors and it becomes a more bright red. We use blue and red because they're easy to see the difference. But in reality, it's like a dark red and a bright red. So it's a little different, but no big deal. It's not going to be asking me for that kind of thing. And now, this is a neat thing. Look here. Two going that way. And two going that way. Okay. Now, I will put arrows. You'll be able to follow the blood flow. And so forth. I'm going to do a little more marking up. I'm going to come back here now. I'm going to take all that beautifulness and change it a little. There we go. So we want to see it. We want to see the right colors. So we'll just do it like that. Like this. And it goes there. So here's a little um, reminder from the blood vessels lab. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. So when you do the blood vessels lab, if you haven't done it yet, you're going to see artery away. Okay? A and A, arteries away. So in that lab, every artery we did was red because they're going away from the heart, carrying oxygen out. Just so happens tonight, we do the rule breakers. 
Okay, when you do the heart, the blood vessels on the heart are different. See, right here, this pulmonary trunk is leaving the heart. It's going away, so it's technically an artery. These two branches are going away, so they're arteries. But they're blue. They're deoxygenated. So look how I do it to make your world simple. These blood vessels that are associated with the lungs, they are always called the pulmonary vessels. This one's pulmonary, and these two are pulmonary. This one is pulmonary. And these two are pulmonary. These two, I'll get to. I just want to draw them a little more. A little thicker. Same down here. Because I want to make sure that you know which way the blood's going. Well, oh, that's bad, but you get the idea. Okay. That blood is going back to the heart. So let's let's recap and let me ask some things to help you. The right side of the heart is shown in what color? Why? It's deoxygenated. Any idea why that blood is low in oxygen? Perfect. It's gone through the body. It's out there. This is the blood coming up from the bottom. This is the blood going down from the top. They're coming from the body. The body used the oxygen, and now the body's sending the blood back to the heart. So the inferior vena cava, deoxygenated blood coming back. Superior vena cava, deoxygenated blood coming back. It hits the right atrium. The right atrium pushes it down. Yes, we know some just flows, but it also contracts and pushes the rest, fills up the ventricle. Now the ventricle contracts, pushes blood up and out. And I'll put the little valve right there. Okay. That right side of the heart, what organ is it sending blood to? The lungs. Okay, let me, oh, can't believe I didn't even label them. Oh, back when I studied acupuncture, I studied acupuncture for a year. The abbreviation for lung is LU. When you do acupuncture, it's the lung meridian. So I use the little LU for lung, all right? So there's our little egg-shaped lungs. They're receiving blood from which side of the heart? The right side of the heart. So here's how I say it. Maybe this will stick. The right side of the heart's a pump that pumps blood to the lungs. That's it. That is the job of your right side of the heart. Your right side is a pump that pumps to the lungs. And so it helps us when we study the heart to study side to side, not top to bottom. When we first learned it, we learned the chambers, top and bottom, and that's how you learn them in elementary school, and then again in junior high, and maybe for five seconds in high school, one day, they did all the systems in one day, and they said, oh, there's your heart, that's your right and left side, that's your top and bottom, and you're done. I guess I'll probably come in here and do this. Like that. So... What would we call these blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart and into the lungs? Huh. I don't know why I put the dot, but it's cute, but I'm going to take it away.
And I'm using color on purpose to help you now because these are the only arteries in the body that are blue. The only ones are the pulmonary arteries. And this pulmonary artery right here before it branches has a special name. It's the pulmonary trunk. It is also an artery because blood is going away from the heart. So I can say it another way. I'll say it the same way and then I'll say it a different way. The right side's a pump that pumps to the lungs. The right side's a pump that pumps to the lungs. Okay. Which chamber is sending blood to the lungs? The atria or the ventricle? The ventricle, right? The ventricles are the strong ones. And when the ventricles send blood out, which direction is it going if you're upright? It's going up, right? And on this picture, it's going up. Everybody sees that? It goes up and out. So here's the crazy thing. All blood that leaves the heart, it leaves the top. We don't have, see this vessel? Sorry, if anybody watches it. The vessel, that's this. The aorta curves, and it goes behind the heart, and it comes out right there. The blood that leaves and goes here, we're going to get to it. It comes out over there and goes down. So all blood that leaves the heart leaves the top. It's going up, and then it turns the corner to go down. Okay. So there we have half the heart. We have the entire right side of the heart. Deoxygenated blood. going to the lungs to pick up that oxygen. And so one of the trickier things for people is that the right side of the heart sends blood to both sides of the body, to both lungs, okay? So now there's blood in both lungs and they're gonna send blood back to the heart because now that, that blood has oxygen it's changed colors, it's oxygenated, it's red, it's going to go back to the heart so the heart can send it to the body. Now, we learned in the last lab, the aorta is the main artery that goes to the whole body. The branches of the aorta go everywhere. So these little blood vessels here and here, they have to find a way to get the blood to the aorta, right? Well, their way is this. They send it back to the heart so that it can go there, so that it can go there, and it can go there, and go to the whole body. So what does that mean for us? That means that, first off, that little dot away, these blood vessels are going back into the heart, or back in, and blood vessels that send blood back in Are called veins, right? So these four on both sides are our pulmonary veins. Our pulmonary veins. And yes, there's usually two pulmonary arteries and four pulmonary veins. Okay. There can be branches once it gets out to the lungs and so forth, but when we see it right by the heart, it's usually one artery on each side and two veins. So when you see picture and you're asked to label the picture, you'll see it like that. The one with the four vessels, the two on each side, those are the veins. And the one with just the one on each side is the artery. Okay. So once again, the toughest thing is from the first lab, you're used to calling everything red an artery and everything blue a vein. The pulmonary are the only arteries and veins in the whole body that are the wrong color. They're the only ones in the whole body. And there's a very logical reason. Their job is to go get the oxygen and to return it. So they're opposite. They're opposite. So here's what this means. Both lungs are going to send blood back to the heart. Well, the right side's already taken. They can't send it to the right. That's the blue blood. That's the deoxygenated. We don't want to mix this blood and mess it up. So... Both sides of pulmonary veins send their blood right back here. Which 
atrium is this. Just give me a side of the heart. Very good. That's the left atrium. And I usually do this for you guys. We know that there are four openings. Now the picture, if you're seeing the picture that's unlabeled, you're only seeing two because really the heart's turned and they're kind of hidden. But I put those four there so that you can remember, aha, uh -huh, one, two, three, four, six, all open here into this chamber, which is which chamber? The left atrium. The left atrium. So I need to make, oh, that's why the, I changed the size. There we go. Left atrium. And now blood's going to go down. So let me draw the blood. The blood comes in. It's going to fill this up. I think I like to color more as an adult than I did as a kid. So there we go. I have to put a little valve in there. So we'll do just like we did before and use the black. Put a little valve going here. I'm going to show the blood in white. What's going to go down? Yes, this is the left ventricle is going to contract and shoot blood up. And out right there. And right here, we have a little valve. That's a lie. It's really right there, right behind that, but in the aorta. And we can't see it. So what they usually do is they usually draw it hanging out right here on the side like that. But it's really directly behind this one. Okay, they just, they just want us to see it. And then that blood is going to go. Yep, you got it. Wow. <laughs> like that. That's what it's going to do. It's going to go up here. And it's going to turn the corner. And it's going to come down and even go right there. So right there, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hide that because we want the room. I'm going to use a red pen. We're going to make that blood vessel extend. And now I'm going to go ahead and teach you something new. It may not be that new. You have a muscle that does that. That creates the separation between your abdomen and your chest. Go ahead and tell me the name. Diaphragm? Yes, that's the diaphragm. I like to say diaphragm because it sounds funny. So there you go. It's the diaphragm. Diaphragm. This little blood vessel is the aorta. Except, oh my goodness, from the last class, and I'm just going to say this for you since we didn't meet together, they give it different names. When it's here, when it's coming down, they call it the descending aorta. And as soon as it crosses the diaphragm, now it's in your gut area, your abdominal cavity. So then it becomes the abdominal aorta. And so let's, uh, let's make it a little thicker diaphragm so we can see that. And yes, absolutely, this blood is going down. Anytime is a good time for this. I'll just mention this little point on the heart. You know, when we draw a Valentine heart, we always put a point. That's this right here. It's called the apex. The apex of the heart. I'm good at drawing Valentine. Actually not. Sometimes I make them look like my little silly heart. <laughs> okay. 
that's okay. It's not about the quality. It's about getting a sketch that lets you see where things should be. It really, um, it's what I tell people, draw these things. It doesn't matter how they look. Um, oh, what do I need to write over here in red to make this balanced? Come on, pen. Oh, no. Oh, I picked up the wrong one. Ah, it doesn't have a battery. <laughs> it was scaring me. And let's say a couple of things. And now it's picture ready. So beautiful. It's so beautiful. Let's do that. See, I traced it. <laughs> right side of the heart's a pump that sends blood to the lungs. Maybe let me say it first so then you know where I'm going. Left side is a pump that returns blood to the heart, right? And that makes sense. You just might have said left atrium or been more particular or something. So right side's a pump that sends blood to the lungs. Left side's a pump that returns it to the heart. See that? And so we have two pumps side by side. And here's the neat thing. They work at the same time. The right and the left contract together. The top two chambers contract and push blood down. And then the bottom two contract and push it up and out. And that's how it works. The top ones push it down. So what is the job of the right and left atrium? They contract and push blood down for what purpose? Uh -huh. Why are they contracting and pushing it down? Why are they pushing the blood down? To do what? I would say it a different way. They take the blood, push it here, push it here. So what are they doing to those ventricles? Filling them up. They're loading them. They're filling them up. So then when they contract, there's something to push, right? So the job of the top two, this is why they're thin. I'm going to take all this away and you're going to see. The muscle up here on the atria is very thin. It doesn't need to be strong. They only push blood this far. There, it's done, right? They don't have to push it past that. The ventricles have to push it far. How far does the right ventricle have to push it? To the lungs, but watch this. And back. It does the job. It pushes it to the lungs and back to the heart, OK? But the left ventricle, where does it push it? Out to the body. What part of your body? Every part but the lungs, right? To your toes, to your fingers, to your shoulders, to your guts, to your legs, everywhere. So how hard does the left have to push compared to the right? Harder. Yeah, harder, for sure. Because, I mean, even if you're two feet tall, two feet to your toe is a lot further than two inches to your lungs, right? It's got to push a lot further. So, everybody got that picture? Because I'm going to erase it all in one little... Okay, here we go. So, look here. There we go. Look how this looks compared to this. Left is thicker. Look how this looks. Oh, so tiny compared to this even. Look at that. They just draw a single little line. They even gave up on the ripples there. That's how little muscle there is in the atria. Okay. Um, couple of fun things. Check in our memory. Name this chamber. Very good. Notice I can name it up there or down here, right? Mm -hmm. Name this chamber. 
left atrium. Name this chamber. And this one? Right atrium. There we go. How's about we name that valve? Nice. Uh huh. The valve. Do we have to put the valve on there? Would that be? No, because I will say name this valve. If well, let me phrase that. If I don't say valve in the sentence, you should put valve. But probably it'll say name this valve, and then you could say, oh, tricuspid. What's the most common name for this one? Uh huh. Mitral. Oh, here's why. Anybody? Anybody know? Remember? Whatever. It's got two flaps. The flaps point like this. I don't know when the last time you went to the church, the Catholic church was, but probably the Pope wasn't there. <laughs> the Pope wears a hat that's shaped like that, and it's called a miter. And somebody early on that was dissecting the heart looked in and saw that valve and said, it looks like the Pope's hat. Let's call it the mitral. And that name stuck. So that's why it's called the mitral valve, because it looks like the Pope's hat. By the way, all bishops wear a hat like it somewhere. So. so there's those two. Those two valves are the AV valves. All right? This is an AV valve. So it's very important we understand these are different. See how they have the long cords? And look, they attach to little muscles down there. We're going to name those muscles and those cords that come off the valve. These, so different. Just little flaps, no cords, no muscles. They're just right at the opening of these vessels. So we name them according to the vessel. So what is this valve? Semilunar Yes, you could call it that, pulmonary semilunar. And what is this one? Aortic valve. Yeah. So that's the aortic valve. That's the pulmonary valve. We could put semi-lunar on both of them because both of those anybody want to take a wild guess why they call them semi-lunar they look like a little each flap looks like a crescent moon like a little crescent moon so somebody said oh it looks like a little moon i like to say this if you look at that one it looks like a little baby's bottom so the baby's mooning you so there you have it it says Semi-lunar valve, okay? Anything you can remember helps. All right, those are the valves, and those are the chambers. The most basic information. Yeah, probably a good picture, right? To keep those straight. Um, there's a lot of information in tonight's. It feels like a lot when we go through it, but then at the same time, you're going to go, that's really not that much stuff. But I take our time with it. I could just give you a list and say, memorize it. But I want you to see how it works. I want you to see where the blood goes. Because that's, that's when you understand the heart, when you get the right side's different from the left. The right side sends blood to the lungs. And the left side returns it to the heart. Oh, did I say it right? No, I said it wrong. I know I said it wrong. Where's the left? Sorry. I was talking about the right side sends it to the lungs. Where's the left side send it? It doesn't send it back to the heart because it's already in the heart, right? The pulmonary veins send it back. Yes. I'm sorry. You may have to correct what my lousy brain Yes, the left side sends it to the body. It's the pulmonary veins that send it back. So the right side sends it to the lungs. The left side sends it, sorry, I'll turn the light on back, to the body. Oh, my goodness. So definitely I won't be posting this video. I will be posting the hour and a half version from here. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to name some other little structures. 
<clears throat> that we didn't have yet. So I'm going to take these things back off. So let me reinforce and do this a couple more times. Right side to the lungs, left side to the body. Okay. My apologies greatly. Whoa, what's going on in my brain? Which side of the heart would be more red? Tell me why. Oxygenated, because it's getting it right out of those lungs. Okay. What color is the right side? Blue, because it's low in oxygen. What's the fancy word for low in oxygen? Deoxygenated. And that blood is coming from our body. And our body already took the oxygen. So with our AV valves, we have little cores. They're little like tendons. They're almost like tendons because they go to that muscle down there. So they give them a crazy name. Sorry about that spelling. <laughs> Cordae tendineae, okay, or cordae tendineae, you could say. Um, and those cords attached to these little muscles called capillary muscles. Those are little what we call capillary muscles. Now, papillary, we'll have a few times in AMP. We'll have papilla. Maybe you had it with Dr. Day. Maybe he did the papilla of the tongue, but maybe not because they don't do sensation much anymore. Um, papilla is a projection. Anything that projects out could be called a papilla. Okay. We'll see the kidney has little papilla when we get to the kidney. It has little projections like this. So that would be the same over here. Cordae tendineae. And papillary muscles right there. The weird thing about the book, when you look at the labeled version, it only labels them on one side or the other. And so sometimes people are like, not making the right. Yeah, yeah. And so notice, these don't have those. These are semilunar valves. They are quite different. They are little, they are tiny, and they don't go shooting up anywhere, okay? Also, these point down, these point up, because that's the way they take the blood. So they point that way on purpose. This thing here, any divider could be called a septum. That septum or that wall is between what two chambers? The ventricles. So here's the first name for this. That means between, right? Inter means between. So that septum is the interventricular septum. You do not pierce that septum. Right? You can pierce this one. You can pierce other septum. You don't go piercing your heart septum because then the blood will shoot across. That's not a very good thing. Most people know what a septum is, though, because of piercings now. So that helps coming into AMP and knowing what a septum is. Okay, watch this. Who's ready to name these blood vessels? Good. What about this one? Um, 
Good. And so those are the same, right? Just the other side of the body. Right on. I, I like to point this out too. This is a really good picture. Notice how it shows that vena cava opening there. So the blood would come up and come in here and then go down. Also, it shows the opening here for the superior vena cava to actually open up into that. So you're probably going, what in the world is this little thing right here? It's not an opening, it's an indention. It used to, in a baby, when they're growing, it's open. Because when a baby's growing inside a mom, it's not breathing. Mom's breathing, mom's blood is oxygenated, so the baby doesn't have to send all the blood to the lungs. It can just send some blood to the lungs and it can bypass. So when you get to your program, they'll talk about that and they'll talk about alternate stuff. I'm just going to tell you, you don't have to know it for us. You'll see it on your label sheet and we'll see it in a little bit. It's called the Fossa ovalis. I, I know it's not going to be on the test though. But it is cool. When babies have a heart murmur, that's the number one reason. Because it's not closed and blood goes through and it swishes and that's a murmur. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, boy, we did good. We did real good. What, what, what? That, here, I'll say it right. What chamber is the thickest? Left. Left. Why is the left ventricle the thickest? Very good. It has to pump blood to the whole body, not return it to the heart. Not that. The left side <laughs> pumps it to the whole body. Right? Oh my gosh, I was so convincing. I convinced myself. I'm like, what was I saying all those times? Oh my gosh. No, the right side does all that. The right side sends it to the lungs and returns it to the heart. Okay. What does the aorta's name change to when it goes behind the heart here? Descending. And then it goes under the diaphragm and goes out way low. And what does it become? Abdominal aorta. There's a good chance you'll see that on the test on the blood vessel pictures, right? Okay. All right. So go ahead and get this picture. See these, um, not these papillaries, but see all these other things? They're little spikes or little columns and the blood can go around them and between them. And they're heart muscle just like this. So I don't know if you remember when you did bone and you did spongy bone, the little spikes were called trabeculi and that means columns. And these trabeculi are made of muscle, muscles meet. So they call it trabeculi carne. And so you'll see that on the labeled version. So I'll just go to that picture real quick. And let's just highlight now. Let's see. I like to do this to show you just how much we've already done in a short period of time. What's that? And that? And what chamber is this? And what chamber is this? And what chamber is all of this here? And look where they labeled it, just right there. All right, snuck it in right there. And what chamber is all of this? Look where they put it, right there. Because they have so many other things they're doing. Now, these are the things that we just learned. Chordae tendinae, right across there. Okay. These muscles here, they're only labeled over here. These are the papillary muscles. But notice the cords and the muscles are on both sides. Okay. This trabeculi carni, all of these columns up here, like those where I put that dot, those are all trabeculi carni. Not taken. There we go. Those are two. Um, they just want you to understand that the ventricle surface is not smooth. It's got these columns in it. Okay. This. 
name this valve. So then name this one. Yep, mitral or bicuspid, but mitral is the most common. Those two, tricuspid and mitral, their group name is an abbreviation. AV. They are the AV valves. Atrioventricular. And yes, that is hard because we also have arteries and veins. And sometimes we study this all together. AV stands for atrioventricular, just like you guys are saying. Okay, very good. I don't do those or those. Okay. They're minor comparatively. And also, we don't do this. Heart muscle. We're, we're going to, you're probably going to call that cardiac muscle because we're going to see a cardiac muscle slide. But it won't be labeled on this picture like that. And I have to add something because I added it to the picture. What do we call this right here? The point. Yeah, apex. The apex. Okay, the other two valves, this valve and this valve, what's their group name that's not seen up there? Very good, semilunar valves. So now this one is the pulmonary because it goes into the pulmonary trunk. And this one is the aortic because it leads to the aorta. What are the only blood vessels in the whole body that are the wrong color from what everything else is. The pulmonary. So look, this blue one is a pulmonary artery. And this blue one is a pulmonary artery. And this one that leads to it here is a pulmonary trunk. Very good. It's a pulmonary trunk. I like to do this, though to make it stand out. The pulmonary trunk. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's not so good with the yellow. Can you see it good with the yellow there? Yeah, okay. It's funny, I see it better on that screen, but when I look on the computer, it's not so great. And then, we don't have much left. Just blood vessel names. This big boy, and these little red ones. Pulmonary veins. And I will tell you, you know, sometimes on test day, you get, you got all these blood vessels that are red arteries and blue veins. Just make sure when you see a picture of the heart, you slow down because you will most likely be asked about the pulmonary vessels. A lot of people, I'll just be honest with you, the way that the pools are, a lot of people get a question that asks both pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins. That's eight easy points. But then again, right? But the thing is, if you put pulmonary artery for pulmonary vein, you got the pulmonary part, I can give you partial credit. Okay. And I'll have to take it off. So there's that. There's that. Okay. Oh, and the last thing, the septum. The beautiful septum right here. Okay. Interventricular septum. Very important, by the way. It's not just a wall, it's a muscle too. So it also contracts and it helps the ventricles to push blood. Okay, very important. So I think we did great. We got what we needed. If you want that picture, just to have it highlighted to show yourself so you can just roll through them, you can get that also. We're doing good. So now we can look at then, we can look at a heart that has this everything together. Um, the only thing I'm going to add here, so let me let me go through it first and just show you where the chambers are, and then I will add some coronary blood vessels. These little blood vessels on the heart, we don't do as many as we used to. We 
decided to change. Um, but I do want to show you the big ones. So first thing, first little bit here. What chamber is inside there? Right atrium. Okay. And what chamber is inside here? And so now I think when you see the outside of the heart, you can tell it's rotated. When you saw it cut open, it was harder to understand that. But now you see this, you can tell, oh, it's turned. And so below that, here's your left ventricle, but most of it's on the back. It's rotals around. So that makes this, and I like to do it this way. Look, that's where the blood goes out. So that makes this your right ventricle right there, because that's where the blood goes. So right ventricle and little left ventricle over there. Left ventricle is bigger, the thicker muscle, but it goes around toward the back because the heart's rotated. That's why. We got our all our little blood vessels, right? Inferior vena cava, superior, pulmonary arteries, pulmonary trunk, pulmonary veins. We know all those things. And we got our cute little apex. Finally, they put that there. We got our little aorta over there. So here's what I want to show you. I, I would say get a picture of that. So then I can zoom and focus on one thing. I'm going to focus on the coronary arteries and coronary veins to help you understand what they are. So now, here's what I want you guys to see. Yeah, that's, that's good right there. So here's what blood vessel? Aorta, right? So right there, what you're not seeing is there's a branch that comes off right about here that goes right there. And there's a branch that comes off that other side and goes in the gully right there and comes right to there. And those two branches right there are called the coronary arteries. Now, I can zoom out. It's that white one, right? And that's on the right. And so this one is the left. Coronary artery. That white one there. When we zoom out, you'll see they're labeled. Now, here's the weird thing. All the red ones on the surface of the heart are coronary arteries. But the biggest one, the first one on the right, is called the right coronary artery. And the first one on the left is called the left coronary artery. And the other coronary arteries that come off of that have different names, like anterior to ventricular and circumflex and all these others that you don't need to know. We're not going to cover those, OK? You need to know they're there. And you need to understand the concept. These are red. What does that mean about their blood? Oxygen. They have oxygen. And their job is to send that oxygen to all these little bitty branches to feed that oxygen to the heart. So that's what the coronary arteries do. They feed or supply the heart muscle. Okay. And so they're sending it out. They're sending it out to the muscle. And then in the muscle, there's capillaries, so the oxygen can escape, right? It has to be capillaries. We forget about that. And then those capillaries are going to connect to the veins, and the veins are going to turn around and go right back. So wherever you see an artery, you see a vein there sending blood the opposite way because it sends it back. And so if you want to get that picture, get that picture. And I'm going to show you the veins by actually going to the back of the heart. So crazy thing about the back of the heart. It's like you're looking at my heart when I'm standing this way. So now right's over there. So I just like to, when we get to this, oops. I need a pen that reads my mind. The sides are opposite. What's this cute little thing right here still called? Still the apex, but now it points the other way. So remember what happened. When we looked at the front of the heart, the left was more toward the back. 
So look here. The right is hidden right here. This, all that right there is the left. That's the left atrium. Little right atrium is just like right there. Okay. I'm going to take that away because it gets in the way of stuff. Very important for us. The way we learned this helps us. What did we have four of that were red, which is kind of the wrong color for what we want them to be? Very good. Very big. And then these two right above it are the pulmonary arteries. All right. And then, of course, this is the aorta, superior, inferior vena cava. This is the crazy thing. The heart isn't just rotated, it's pivoted. So the inferior vena cava it comes in at a different angle. It's kind of odd looking right there. Okay. The number one thing I show you this picture for, and I will say this, it's a good chance you're going to be asked pulmonary on a picture like this. Probably get, and that's, you might get one set of pulmonaries on the front and one set on the back. Okay. To me, this is easy because you see the four. You see the four all together, and you can see that, oh, wow, they go close together into the same chamber. But this is what we really want to focus on right here. These are your coronary veins, and they're all carrying blood back there. But where is there? See, it came out. The coronary arteries were red because they came off the aorta. They feed the muscle. The coronary veins now have blue blood. The muscle stole the oxygen and the nutrients and the hormones and the sugar and the salt and the water and everything. And now that blood going, well, where's it going? Watch this. Yes, it's going back where all blue blood goes. I wanted that to be white. Back to the right. Right in there. It plugs right in there. And so there's one coronary vein that I want you to know the name for. Just like the coronary arteries. We want to know the left and right coronary artery. The number one coronary vein is this big enlarged one right here. It's so big they gave it a different name. They call it the coronary sinus. This is kind of dilated. And it sends blood. I mean, that's what all coronary veins are doing, but that's the last one that they collect into. And it sends blood back to the right atrium. See, this blood's blue. We better send it to the blue side of the heart so that it can go appropriately to go get its oxygen. And so that's what our... Um, coronary veins do. Now remember... Coronary arteries and coronary veins are both on the front and the back. If they're red back here, they're the arteries. And if they're blue back here, they're the veins. You won't have to name any specific ones other than coronary sinus or left or right coronary artery. But it's the concept that's more important. These that we're seeing on the heart, these are the blood vessels that get clogged that cause heart attacks. These are the ones that they do bypass surgery. Okay. When these get plaqued, your heart muscle gets no oxygen and it dies. And that's called a heart attack. Okay. Did y'all get this picture? Because that's it for this picture. And so what I did is there's our blank for you to practice on. Look, here's a blank out of another book that's got blood flow. So I, I usually recommend... Hey, why not just snag a picture of it so it's on your phone if you do any studying by looking at your pictures from class you might see that
And then this picture, actually I do know, I like to say this is not as um, detailed as the other one, but this one sometimes shows up on the test. It's in some of our test pools. It's from an OER book we were using, and we used it's blank also. It's, it's the same picture as the pretty one that we learned from. Any structures that are extra on here, and I know what it is, it's moderator band, that wouldn't be there, right? It would just be the same stuff. This over here, epi, myo, and endo, we, we do that in lecture. So it's, it's not going to be there either. It's just exactly the same stuff. So that's just another version of that. If you want that picture, once again, I do know this one shows up on the test. This picture is just a nice flow chart. So if we think about our heart, what color is the right side blood? Right, right side blue, right? Right side blue. Why is the right side blue? I know I skipped a couple. I'll come back to those. Let me, I'll turn on the light. Why is the right side blue? Good, deoxygenate. So watch this. If we follow it, inferior and superior vena cava, right ventricle to the lungs. Changes color, comes back to the left side of the heart, left ventricle, aorta to the body. The capillaries let it steal the oxygen. It becomes blue, and it goes back to the inferior and superior vena cava. There you have it. So what this is about is teaching you that there's two different circulations. There's really three. We just did coronary for the heart. But there's systemic, which means your whole body, and pulmonary, which is the lungs. It's the pulmonary circuit that's a different color. It's only the pulmonaries. And so this is good to help you practice, to get your bearings when you're first learning. Oh, yeah, blood goes out the heart, it spreads to everything, it's this color, it does this, it goes there. So that's what this is. This is not a picture that's going to show up on the test to label anything. It's just to really help you understand the concept. Now, after this is the OER version of the same thing, right? We're doing different books and stuff, so here's another version. Actually, this one's pretty good because it gets a little more specific than the other. And so it shows some of those same things. Also not on the test. It's just to help you get your bearings with the difference between where the blood goes and how it goes. And this time, it's not as focused on exact pictures, right? It's big concepts. These, however, are two of my favorite pictures. That's why I put them in here. These pictures are very important for understanding the position of the valves to one another. So you'll notice in this picture, the top two valves are open. And then if you flip your page like I'm going to do right here, now the bottom two are open. Okay. Now, top and bottom is relative. It's just, I'm so, so check this out. Here's what I really want you to see. So keep those, don't, if you have those pulled up on yours, don't change. I'm going to show you here. There's our heart we've been doing, right? See how the AVs are actually on the side, right? They're way over on the side. So watch this. If we go here, there's your AVs. They're way over on the side. And right in front, pulmonary's in front, and the aortic is right behind it. And we've been seeing it like this. Because they've wrote to show us they've kind of manipulated things. But it's really, so the semilunars are in the middle and the AVs are on the side. So let's go back. So how are we seeing those valves? Well, here's how. They cut the atria off and threw them away. We're looking down 
into the ventricles. See the valve and the cusps, the papillaries and the chordae? So we're looking down into the ventricles there. Yeah, and if you open up the other, right, if you go there, well, now the blood would be shooting out here and coming out at us. Pulmonary trunk, aorta. Right and left AV valve. Look, three flaps, two flaps. By the way, the semilunars always have three flaps. That's how they're designed. Okay. And so here's what I like. I, I just like to kind of do this for a second because I can do it easy with the little trackpad here. So look at the top. Those are the AVs. If they are open, which way is blood going here? It's going down. Can you see that? Blood's going in. So those are open. Now the ventricles contract and shoot blood out. Watch this. Boom. That blood hits those valves and closes them. And now the blood shoots out from these two. So I like to show this and go, ah, blood's going into the ventricles and out. In and out. And that just shows the valves. And it's a good picture of the valves. Absolutely not on the test. It's just a nice picture to help you. Because if all we ever see, guys, if all we ever see is this, it's real. I mean, we can memorize it, but it doesn't do justice to really seeing how many flaps are on the valves and, and, and a little different stuff. So we've made it. We only have one more picture to do and one more topic to cover, and we're done. And that is a slide that you covered in AMP1. And that is called cardiac muscle. And you've got to love it, right? We did the endocrine. How many slides did we see? We saw a lot. And now we're doing the heart, and we're seeing one slide. We're gonna, we did blood vessels, and we saw two slides, an artery slide and a vein slide. So on this next test, you have an artery slide, a vein slide, and a heart muscle slide. That's it for the slide. Okay, key features. I don't know if you remember this. Cardiac muscle fibers are. They're branched. The cells or fibers are branched. And if you look at it, you can see the branches in here. It's not easy to follow, but you can tell they're not perfect straight tubes. Okay. And the cells are short. So actually, everywhere that you see these really dark lines like this, that's where two cells are joining end on end. Like if you push your fingers together and it makes a line there where they join, that's what those are. This is one of the best ones. I didn't circle it, that one down there. Anybody remember what those are called? Yes. intercalated discs and that is where the cells join okay so in those discs we have both gap let me make some separation there gap junctions and i don't know if you remember these desmosomes the desmosomes are the really strong junctions. They're the strongest. Picture this, heart muscle is constantly contracting. And when it contracts, it's pumping blood. So it's kind of violent to be, a, you can feel a heartbeat and it's in, cased inside of you. So we don't want the cells to ever pull apart. So we join them with the strongest junctions, desmosomes. But we want the impulse to spread rapidly because heart muscle has to function as a unit. I'll say that in a minute. Since we want the impulse to spread, we need some channels to help the impulse go through. So the concept is intercalated disc with those things. Okay. Um, yeah. Fancy word. 
by the way, most of what I'm teaching you right now is for lecture anyway, because I know it's in the lecture pools. You might see this picture and might get to label intercalated disks and might need to say a gap junctions in there. Cardiac muscle is really fascinating because it needs to function as a single unit. Not as individual cells. It needs to function as a unit. Hey, what's your ventricles do? They pump blood up and out. And they contract at the same time. So that but all the cells so the cells can contract together. How does that happen? How do we function as a single unit? It's real simple. We know that we have, I'm going to draw a heart over here these little black there we go what's this so we're gonna just show the septum right here so let's say here is a little it's not gonna look good but I want to use a thin and by the way they're nowhere near this long let's say that there is one little cardiac muscle cell with its branches then this And no, they're not really, but this gives you the idea. One cell can join two. And now these two can join four. And at the next level, whoo, boom, boom, it's rapidly multiplying, right? And by the way, they're not that long. That happens here, 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 here. So when the impulse goes up, goes through all the cells and spreads around and allows that ventricle and that ventricle because it starts at the apex. So it goes through the septum and the sides at the same time, allowing them to function as a unit. Why am I telling you that? Because I like to give you tips from lecture and I know that this word's on the lecture test. Cardiac muscle functions as a syncytium. That means a unit, a single unit. That is a fancy AMP word. What site mean? No, site, site, osteocyte, chondrocyte cell, right? Cell. you're together before you're married, that's a sin. Sin means together, okay? Sin means together. It does mean same, you're right, but it means together. So syncytium, cells working together, cells functioning as a unit. So cardiac First, muscle function does a unit. That's not a bad little cartoon drawing of those little branch cells. Usually I try to use the thick pen and it doesn't work so well. I can't get it small enough. So there's your um, cardiac muscle. It functions as a syncytium. The fibers are branched. We have intercalated discs with gap junctions and desmosomes. Yes, those other. Oh, there's one more thing I better show you. Forgot to tell you this. Remember, cardiac muscle also... All these little thin lines, I don't know if you can see the little thin ones going across through here. They're not dark and black. Anybody remember what those were called from AMP1? Striations. Those are your striations. So cardiac muscle is striated just like skeletal muscle. It has actin and myosin and all that stuff. We're not going back into that. Um, and cardiac muscle oh thank god it's involuntary were you ever a seven-year-old kid throwing a fit and if you could have just if you could have stopped your heart you would have done it just to make the parents mad you know ah, 
God protected us. He made cardiac muscle involuntary so you could never stop your heart just with your willpower. Yeah, that takes some do it. Some do it. So imagine if she had the capacity to stop her heart, she probably would have done it. Right? So, yeah. Save us from ourselves. And so that is that is it, y'all. That is cardiac muscle. That's the heart. That's blood flow through the heart. That's, that's it. We kind of did it in about an hour and a half. Not so bad. Not so bad. Um, the labeling. So just so you know, the test is half blood vessels, half heart. We have two heart labs. So that means that there's fewer questions from tonight that will actually show up on the test than from the blood vessels. Okay, the blood vessel questions are easier because they're all labeling pictures. This might have some questions like the right side pumps to the, and we're going to get it right on the test, not like I messed it up tonight, right? So, okay. Um, you might see this slide with a couple things on it. You'll have a few heart pictures to label. I really think by the time most people get to the test, the heart pictures are pretty easy. The only thing is you have to write chordae tendinae a few times. You have to write ten, trabeculi carni a few times just in case you get that question. Okay. Interventricular septum, those things. Um, yes. About yes. So there's so many. I know. This is hard. <laughs> what, <laughs> what's the good stretch? I, I went into the lecture today and it was a bit too much. So yeah, yeah, it is. I don't know how to just, just go. Just so go. I would, I, one thing I'll say is next week on Thursday, I will do an immune system overview. Okay. So this is the chapter with the most. It's by far the most. Something to keep in mind. When we have when we have a chapter that has no lab, I will utilize practice quizzes more. So for lymphatic and immunity, you'll get a higher percentage of your questions on that from the practice quizzes. You still should watch the lectures. I hate I'm recording. The immune system has so many. And it's already on, and they're little bitty short. It makes it tough. OCs change their recording system. And I don't know if you remember this when y'all had it before, if I mentioned this or not, but um, I had like a nice neat package of my videos for AMP one and two, and they didn't save those. They saved some of my second hand ones. So that immune system is one of those examples. It's got everything, but it cut it into, this one's a minute 39, and this is, and that's terrible. Thank goodness you can hit on the playlist and it just played through, but still it's frustrating. Uh, strategy wise, I would look at how much time they are, and I would kind of go, because you know, you can do the preview, you can see the time. This one's an hour, this one's 30 minutes, this one's 45, and look at the total, and it's a lot of time, and base it on when you have time to do those. Um, but it's a lot. Here's the good news. This is in the middle of AMP2. This is the most we will ever have. It's less for module three and module four. So we did this on purpose. The hardest work you have and the most videos you will ever have is right now. And then the last four weeks, there's less. And you will feel the difference when you get to the others. Because yeah, this, this is hard. Like, this is only there's, yeah. yeah, and really what you're doing is you're filling it now. We thought we had a lot of endocrine. Holy moly, there's a lot of this. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't know how to tackle it. I was trying to go in the day. I know. Well, so the thing so is, is now after you had this heart, even though it wasn't long, just being set into this, it's going to stick better now. Because now when something's thrown out there, you go, oh, I know the heart. I know the right side pumps to the lungs, and I know the left side pumps to the whole body. That's what it does. And I know the right side is blue, and I know the left side is red, and I know why. And now you know some of the parts, and just knowing what we, what we did today,
it's going to help the big picture of the cardio and the blood vessels. So really now you're, you're, you have everything you need this weekend. You could do all the heart and all the blood vessels this weekend, the lecture recordings. And I probably would, if it were me, I would push over these next five days and I would do all of chapter 18 and chapter 19 and get them out of the way and let next week be fine tuning your lab stuff because a lot of what we do in the next lab will also be covered in those lectures but you'll get introduced to it in the lectures and it'll make the lab easier and it'll make studying for the lab easier this is one section where there's a lot of overlap between lecture yeah, there, really there really is there really is there really is um and for lab i will give you a handout with things that we're going to do that makes it a lot easier for the next lab to get through uh, it's called the cardiovascular terms and it's in there already oh yeah i think yeah that's what, yeah, our, I, that's what yeah. our that's what our yeah, yeah systole and diastole it starts with that that's our next lab that we'll do we'll go through all those terms okay yeah not that one though not this one. No. No. Yeah. no no i don't do the conduction system in lab anymore it's not on the lab test it's watch i'll show you i'll, I'll go here and show you guys No, now all that's important that's just not on lab okay so on the lab the next lab will do this handout but i won't do it handout style i'll give you the handout i'll print it even if you have it i'll print a few up it's this cardiovascular terms so it just looks like definitions but what I do is I take those definitions and I go through them and I show you things on pictures and explain them and hopefully try to make them all make sense. So it's not just memorizing definitions. Yeah, 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 you did. Yeah, because I've been using this handout for years. So it was there when y'all took it. Yeah. 